Welcome to another video and today we're going to be reviewing the Super NES Classic Edition which I have right here. So I finally got mine. Everybody's getting theirs. You know, I had mine reserved personally. I was one of the lucky people that actually was able to get a reserve at a physical GameStop location. I was able to just walk in and pick up my Super Nintendo Classic, you know, the other day. So uh, if you've you know, followed the channel at all. I did a launch live stream of the system last night. This video is being recorded the day after that. So I've had my time to sit down and play with the system, dick around with it, and let's dive into my thoughts about it. Do I think this thing's worth $80? First and foremost, this Super Nintendo Classic is very much a proper sequel to the NES Classic that released last year. Now, the difference between these two systems is simple. This is a Super Nintendo that was a Nintendo, so this has Super Nintendo games on it. It has 21 games as opposed to 30. However, they offset the balance of that by putting two controllers in the box this time around. And honestly, that's a good decision on their part because a lot of these games have two player capabilities with them now before we dive into my thoughts on the actual system let's show what the actual system looks like this is the actual system right here i'm holding in my hand as you can see it fits in my hand it's not very big it maintains about the same size as the nes classic itself but it's pretty cool looking these buttons actually work. This is the power button. This is the button to reset the games. As you can see on the back, it has just a standard HDMI out and it has the plug for the micro USB cable power. The cartridge slot doesn't work and the eject button doesn't work, but that's just for show. And then the most puzzling aspect of this is this front part here. Like I understand why they kept this this way because they wanted to maintain the look and the feel of the system, but you actually have to kind of get your hand in here it's hard to do until you figure it out. I seem to screw it up every time. But you basically pull this out, pull it down, and that's how the controllers plug into this machine. But again, I love the look of this device. It's really well done. The other important thing to note here is that this is the controller. So the nice thing they did this time is they made the controller length a lot longer than three feet. That was one of the big downfalls of the NES Classic. I actually had to buy an extension cable just to even use that system because three feet is ridiculous. I get that they were trying to go for the mini aspect of this device, however, you know, that's kind of ridiculous. So the good news here is that this is much longer of a cord. I'll kind of do this here. So this is the end of it, a lot longer. And the other thing that's cool about it is it's just your standard Super Nintendo controller like you would have bought 25 years ago. Um, I like the feel of this controller a lot. It literally feels like a brand new Super Nintendo controller. It works exactly the same. I held it up to one of my uh, personal Super Nintendo controllers that I own from my original uh, SNES and it is exactly identical. The only difference obviously is the input connector has that like classic controller from the Wii uh, input connector, whatever. That, that's how these systems work. 
But again, Super Nintendo controller is one of the best retro gaming console controllers of all time, and it's well represented here, so I'm happy to have that. And it comes with two, so that's pretty cool. Now, we can talk about the game offerings on this machine. I think personally, the game offerings on this machine are very well-rounded, and it's a well-done list overall. There are some things on the system that I don't personally care for, uh, in terms of some of their game selection, but you're never gonna make everybody 100% happy when you make something like this So obviously big standouts on here are things like Super Mario World Super Metroid Legend of Zelda a link to the past Donkey Kong Country Super Mario Kart Super Ghouls and Ghosts you know, there's a lot of games on here that are, were big Super Nintendo games. The other thing that's important to note about this machine is that it has a really good offering of Japanese role-playing games that were released on the system with one huge noticeable omission, which is Chrono Trigger. But in this device, you're getting Final Fantasy III, which was Final Fantasy VI in Japan, one of the greatest RPGs of all time. You're getting Earthbound. You're getting Secret of Mana. You're getting Super Mario RPG. Right there, if you're a role-playing game fan from the Super Nintendo era, you're getting some really great role-playing games on here. It's kind of a hard pill to swallow that Chrono Trigger's not on here. I don't understand why that is. However, we'll get to the best part of this whole package at the end of this. Obviously, the other big thing to note on here, which I'll load, I'll, I'll pull up the box really closely here, is this comes with an actual working copy of Star Fox 2. Yes, yeah, Star Fox 2, the game that was infamously canceled back in 1995, right before it was about to be released, because Nintendo didn't want to focus on making games for a system that they were actively going to take off the market and instead they turned all their development time into Star Fox 64. This was a game that was completely finished and never released. Yes, over the years you could play ROMs of it and stuff that were dumped onto the internet, but this is the first time Nintendo has not only really talked about the game in 20 years, but actually acknowledging ex existence, but putting it on something and actually releasing it for the first time ever. Now, in order to access Star Fox 2, you have to beat through the first level of the original Star Fox, which is also on this system itself. The thing I'll say about Star Fox 2, if you watched my live stream of it last night, I did the thing to unlock it. I played a level or two of Star Fox 2. It's cool that we have it. I think it's a piece of gaming history that everybody should experience at least one time. However, it is a little hard to get into. The font that they use for the text in that game is absolutely hideous and really hard to read. And yes, it might have been the monitor that I was playing on at the time, and I will report back on that when I play it on my big screen TV. However, it just looked kind of hideous. Uh, in terms of everything else, it's interesting to play that game. There was a lot of ideas that they took from it and put into Star Fox 64 and later iterations of this franchise, but it's cool to finally have that piece of gaming history that never was officially released on a Nintendo product. So that is a cool thing to have. In terms of everything else about the system, it has a couple different scan and uh, video modes for it. You have Pixel Perfect, which makes the games look absolutely breathtaking. You have CRT scan mode, much like it did on the NES Classic. Here, I think it looks and works a lot better. I think they really improved that mode from the NES Classic. And then you have your standard 4x3 mode as well. The other thing that's new to the Super Nintendo Classic is this thing has a border system that you can pick from a couple different borders. All these borders are pretty cool. I like the grid one because the grids change color according to what's going on on the actual screen. These are pretty cool. They help make them and maintain the system look that much sharper. So I like that. The menu layout is really nice. The menu music, much like the NES Classic, really nice. It's great to have a lot of these classic games on here. You know, Super Mario World, one of my favorite games of all time, on my all-time favorite games. It's like number two or number three on my list. And I'm happy. It's my favorite Mario game of all time. And I'm happy to have it on this machine. Even though I bought literally every incarnation of that game and re-release that you can imagine, I'm happy to have it on this device. Some of the other great games on here, you obviously have Super Mario Kart, excellent game. I really enjoy it quite a bit. You have Donkey Kong Country. You know, you could argue they could have put all three Donkey Kong Countries on here, but if you were gonna pick one, Donkey Kong Country one would be the one that I would pick. That's on here and represented really well. I'll say about the emulation, none of these games look bad. All the emulation is really good. I'm pretty sure they're just blowing up the emulation that they used on these new 3DS XL eShop releases, and that's fine. Those were great re-releases of Super Nintendo games, and they work well here. Other great games on here, Super Castlevania 4, one of the best Castlevania games of all time, represented well here. 
Street Fighter, Super Punch-Out, F-Zero, Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past is on this machine. One of the best Zelda games of all time is it represented very well on here. So this is a really good, well-rounded list. There's a couple games on here that honestly I would have left out for. I'm not a huge fan of Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. I thought that game was disappointing when it came out 20 years ago, and I still think to this day it's a disappointing sequel to one of the best games of all time, if not the best game of all time. And it is still disappointing 22 years later, so. I would have left that game out if it would have meant I could have got Chrono Trigger on this thing. The only other game choice on here that kind of baffles me a little bit is this thing has both Kirby Superstar and also Kirby Dream Course. I would have picked one or the other to put on here. I didn't need two Kirby games on this machine. You could have picked something else, but this thing has a pretty good, well-rounded list for everyone. Now, obviously, there are always going to be omissions that everybody is upset about. Personally, for me, it's Zombies Ate My Neighbors. However, and this is the point I want to make. It's already been proven as of this recording that the Hack Chi program that was made for putting ROMs on the original NES Classic is going to work with this machine. It's only a matter of time before these people hack this thing and it works properly. So inevitably in the next month or so, you're going to be able to put whatever games you want on this. And I can't wait for that. There's so many games that were omitted from the Super Nintendo library that I want to dump on this thing so I have a massive collection of ROMs to play on a dedicated ROM machine. And yes, I know you might be on the other side just saying, well, why don't you just buy Raspberry Pi and do that yourself and blah, blah, blah. I'd rather have a system that looks like a Super Nintendo play Super Nintendo games. That's what I would want. So in terms of overall reviewing this product, I'm going to go ahead and give it a B plus. I think it's excellent for what it offers. I think $80 is a perfect asking price for what this machine offers. And I think for the casual consumer out there that grew up in the early 90s, that had this system as a kid and wants to have that sense of nostalgia playing these games again, this is going to be the hot ticket Christmas item of 2017. And they're going to be really excited to get their hands on the machine. So for that alone. I think for the hardcore collectors like me, at least for me, I justify the purchase of this thing because eventually it's going to be hackable and I'm going to be able to load up whatever I want on it. And that's what I want out of this machine. So when that's able to be done, I, you know, I would probably even bump this thing up to an A minus, but considering the Super Nintendo is my favorite gaming console of all time. This is very well represented in this box. I'm very happy with it. I think it looks great. I think the product itself looks great. The controller feels incredibly right, just like a Super Nintendo controller. And I think for $80, this thing is perfect and enough bang for your buck. Even if you're the consumer out here who's gonna buy this thing and never hack it or put any other ROMs on here, the 21 games offered in this product are absolutely worth the price alone. I mean, this thing has Earthbound. Earthbound alone goes for like $150 if you want to buy a cartridge of it. So paying $80 to play it on a little mini Super Nintendo, pretty good price. Anyways, guys, the last thing I will close this video out by stating is I was able to get one because I reserved one, but I was out in the wild yesterday. I walked into my local Best Buy. They still had five, two and a half hours after the store opened. So if you're out there and you're dying to get one and you weren't able to get your hands on one, just wait. Do not give in to these scumbag resellers and scalpers. They're getting ridiculous. I watched a video this morning where there's some guy who's selling one for $5,000. This thing that costs $80, he is reselling for $5,000. That's ridiculous. Don't pay for that. Just wait. Nintendo, it seems like they really ramped up production on this little thing. They have already stated they're going to continue production after 2017, after initially stating they didn't want to do that. And if yesterday is, is going to be any sign of how this is going to go this holiday, these things are going to be a lot easier to come by than the NES Classic. So... Just wait. If you weren't able to get one yesterday, there'll be more shipments of these things in the coming weeks. Just wait and pay $80. Don't pay four or $500. Definitely don't pay five grand. That guy's a moron, but don't pay anything more than the retail price for this thing. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video review of the Super Nintendo Classic. I definitely will be streaming more content from it in the coming months. In November, I plan on doing a full playthrough of Super Mario RPG for this machine. And I probably will dive into some of the other RPGs and some of the other games on this machine in live stream form as well. As always, remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell button to get notifications if you subscribe so you know when new videos are coming up. Leave a comment in the comment section below on this video. Thumb it up, thumb it down, and as always, until next time.